Many people will uh, have a little nightcap in the evening and they think that having a drink in the evening helps them fall asleep. It's actually not true. Dr. Matthew Walker is an expert in the study of sleep and how sleep can affect the brain and body. His research also extends to everything from depression and Alzheimer's to learning and even potential life expectancy. He earned his PhD from Nottingham University in London's Medical Research Council in 1996 and is now working as a professor of neuroscience at the University of California, Berkeley. The influential British neuroscientist is the author of the 2017 book, Why We Sleep, which quickly became the New York Times bestseller. His book was even supported by the Microsoft mega-rich behemoth, Bill Gates. We'll have Matthew's book in the description below if you're interested in learning more. Stay until the end, because in this video, we will debunk the top sleep myths on the internet today with the help of Dr. Matthew Walker. If you haven't already, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content on dreams, nightmares, and all things sleep. Myth number one, you can make up any lost sleep on the weekend. Unfortunately, uh, this is one of those myths. Sleep is not like the bank in the sense that you can't accumulate a debt and then hope to pay it off at a later point in time. And let me give you the evidence that, to make that point very clear. If I were to take an individual and deprive them of a whole night of sleep, eight hours of lost sleep, and then I give them all of the recovery sleep that they want on a second night or a third night, yes, we see that they sleep longer. They try to sleep it off, as it were. But do they get back all of that eight hours that, we, that they've lost? And the answer is no. Even if we keep measuring them, they never get back that sleep that they lost. So you cannot accumulate a debt and then hope to pay it off at a later point in time. Even if you catch up on lost sleep over the weekend, it still won't completely restore attention, focus, and other measurements of cognitive performance. Think of it like working out. If you don't work out for a month, doing a weekend workout, while beneficial, doesn't erase the loss of the benefit exercise over time. With sleep, like exercise, consistency of effort is key. The most important thing to remember is to try and get your required sleep during the week so that you don't need to make it up at all. Myth number two, drinking alcohol or consuming cannabis before bedtime helps with sleep. Alcohol and cannabis are the two most commonly used sleep aids in the world. However, both can have negative effects on your sleep, health, and mood when used improperly or in excess. Let's see what Dr. Matthew Walker has to say about this. Many people will uh, have a little nightcap in the evening and they think that having a drink in the evening helps them fall asleep. It's actually not true. Alcohol is a class of drugs that we call the sedatives and sedation is not sleep. So what you're doing when you drink in the evening is actually just knocking out your cortex and you're going into this uh, sedation-like state. You're not going into natural sleep. There are two other problems with alcohol, unfortunately, and I'm so sorry to be giving you this bad news, but um, firstly, alcohol will actually litter your sleep with many more awakenings throughout the night. And so you, you won't feel restored when you wake up the next morning by your sleep. You won't feel refreshed. The problem and the danger is that many people don't remember waking up so much throughout the night when they've been drinking. So they don't realize that it was the alcohol disrupting their sleep. They don't put two and two together. The final thing about alcohol is that it's very good at blocking your REM sleep or your dream sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And we know that REM sleep is essential for a variety of functions, including emotional and mental health. How essential is that REM sleep? Well, studies done back in the 1980s, some really quite shocking studies, demonstrated that if you deprive rats of rapid eye movement sleep, they will die almost as quickly as they would from total food deprivation. That's how essential that dream sleep is, and it's that dream sleep that you block with alcohol. Certainly, uh, uh, marijuana does seem to hasten the speed with which you fall asleep, but unfortunately, marijuana, like alcohol, but through actually a different biological mechanism, will also block your dream sleep. And if you're not getting that critical REM sleep, you can actually become more anxious, even more depressed the following day, and therefore people start to seek out more marijuana to sort of medicate those symptoms that the marijuana is causing because of the sleep disruption. CBD, which is an oil that people use, a cannabinoid, um, 
there, those studies have not been really done in a particularly detailed way, but for the, from what we can tell from the limited data, CBD, the non-psychoactive form of marijuana, actually doesn't seem to impact sleep. So probably a little bit too early to make the definitive claim, but at least that seems to be the emerging uh, story for CBD. So the advice right now is uh, not to think of marijuana as a sleep aid. Just like with any sleep aid or treatment, be sure to consult your doctor before using cannabis. Myth number three, hitting the snooze button can help with your sleep. If you didn't sleep well during the night, the last thing you want to do is keep hitting the snooze button in the morning. Dr. Matthew Walker explains it very clearly here. What about the snooze button though? Unfortunately, it's probably not a good idea because there is some data that I discuss in the book where if you look at the cardiovascular response to an alarm, it's actually quite a stressful event for your cardiovascular system. We see a spike in heart rate, stress chemicals increase. Now, it's fine to use an alarm just that one time in the morning to wake you up, but you shouldn't really be hitting the snooze button because then you are repeatedly assaulting your cardiovascular system. And you may think, well, you know, I, I only hit it maybe sort of three or four times, you know, how bad is that? Well, maybe for that one day it's not bad, but if you're doing that every single day, every week, every month, every year, every decade, across a lifetime, you can imagine the type of additional cardiovascular strain that that places on people. So use the alarm, that's fine, but try to use it once and then get up and have a good day. Will you still use cannabis for sleep? Let us know your experiences in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click on that notification bell for more amazing content like this. Share this with a friend if they may need a wake-up call. Thanks for watching, and until next time, sleep well.